So the next steps are the are the uh, attaching the head block and the heel block. And I've cut those out. I've cut them to the correct dimensions and I've glued the head block in, got it clamped in. And back here, you see, I've got the tail block clamped, but I haven't glued it. I wanna get that one done first so I can take all the clamps off, lay this flat to make sure that, uh, uh, that the what will be the top of the guitar is dead flush with the tabletop. So as soon as that dries, I'll give it 45 minutes, maybe an hour. I will do the same over here and have those done. Then we'll move on to the kerfing. The heel block and the head block are both glued in. And the this is the top of the guitar. And you can see this is flush. The sides are flush with the head block. And it's also flush down here on the heel block. This is the top of the guitar, and if you recall, before I, before the sides were bent, they had to be cut to, um, uh, to match the contour of a dreadnought guitar. And I used that uh, template. And before I did that, I ran the, the, the back, or I'm sorry, the sides across my joiner to get a dead flat um, bottom, which is now the top of the guitar. So from here all the way around is flat and is the same size. You know, it is a flat top guitar. Now the back is a different story. The back has an, an arch to it and these heel blocks and head block are the finished height that I will want these to be. So you can see here, I've got to bring this down uh, three or four millimeters. But on this side, I probably should readjust my, my uh, template. Cause I gotta remove a lot here. So what I'll do, I'll take a, um, a uh, block plane and I'll start planing this till I get it flush with that. Then I'll do the same back here. And then we'll use a, a radius sanding dish to finish out the contours. So the first step is going to be getting the, from the, the, the two upper bouts from here down to here, I'm going to use a block plane and, and bring this down to the same height as this, um, as this head block. I'm using my Lee Nielsen block plane that I've had now for quite a while, it's a great plane. I um, sharpened these before I started this. I sharpened the, uh, the planes, the uh, planes, the hand planes, the block planes, and all the chisels. Right here I'm getting a little tear out trying to go uphill, so I'm just going to work on this side for right now. When you get down to this area here, you need a dead flat surface for this. And because I'm coming downhill, I'm not really catching any, any wood right here. So I have a Lee Nielsen, no, I'm sorry, it's an Ibex. I think it's called a finger plane. It's a violin maker's plane. It's a tiny little plane, but it has a much smaller sole so you can how much wood is taken off there. So I can use this to get down to the final. I'm almost there. All right, so I'm flush here. Now I'll do the same thing on the back. Now that I've brought the, the top and the bottom down to the um, headstock or to the, yeah, the, the head block and the tail block, now the sides have to be brought 
into shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a, this is a 30 foot sanding dish. You can't really tell it from here, but I'll show you um, when you put a straight edge over, you can see that there is a radius there. And of course the back of a guitar is radius to the same 30 foot radius. And to illustrate that, here's a, a if you lay this body on there, you see it fits very snug. So when I put the, the, the back of the guitar onto the sanding dish, you can see there's a big gap there, which means the sides over here that are touching, that's all gotta come down. It's gotta come down to match that. Having placed it on the, um, on the, the radius dish, I know that these sides are much higher than here and here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my block pine. And I'm just gonna start making passes. I'm gonna try to somewhat do the same number of passes on either side and slowly start bringing this, this down. And I'll occasionally, more than occasionally, I'll have to check it with the with the radius dish to see where I stand on that. So I've gotten sides very close to the contour of the sanding dish. But the way you, you fine tune it is you sand it. One easy way to tell um, when you've when you're sanding this if you're getting all those spots is just take a piece of chalk and 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 chalk everything up and then flip it over and start sanding and I'm putting on a pair of gloves because your knuckles are not far from this, this uh, sanding paper. And it's an extremely aggressive grit. And I know from experience that it will take, it will take skin off of your knuckles. Let me, let me lock this in place here. So you can see there's chalk from here to here. And then there is also chalk from here to here. And then a little bit on the way, uh, just above the waist. So those are some hot spots that I need to put some, probably a little downward pressure as I sand. Now that the side has been, uh, the side on the on the back of the guitar has been uh, radiused and brought down to the proper um, heights. Next comes the kerfing. And of course, you can tell that that's not the way the kerfing will go. The kerfing, here's a small piece. This is called reverse kerfing. And of course, it will sit on the inside right here. The reason I've got it pinned on the outside. It's just to help form the shape. So when I um, do glue it in, it'll, it, these have a tendency to break. And if you can kind of pre-bend it a little bit, you can get it in there a little easier. And what the kerfing does is you can see how thin the back or the sides are. You'd never be able to glue um, uh, your, your back or the top on such a small gluing surface. So that's all this does is 
is it, it creates a stiffness, helps hold the, the shape, but more importantly, it gives you a surface to glue your uh, the top and the back. And over here is some maple binding that, um, that I will be installing once the body is completely put together. But it also has to be bent, so I'm gonna spritz it with some water. And then before I put the side bender away, I will place these into the side bender like such. And I will, um, I will hammer it down, uh, get those bent, and then I'm gonna just leave them in there um, until it's time to take them out and wrap them around the guitar. So that's I've got the kerfing glued and clamped to the back of the guitar. You can't tell it, but I'm, but you leave it just a just a tad bit proud of the sides. And then I'll bring it over here, back over here to this 15 foot uh, sanding disc. And with the kerfing down, I'll sand it to match that radius. And just an FYI, the I use clothespins, but there's not just a ton of clamping pressure. So on all the um, clothespins, I wrap some double or some uh, um, some rubber bands to give it a good pinch. So as soon as this dries, I'm going to sand it. I'll turn it over and I'll go through the exact same process on the top. I'll be using a different uh, sanding dish. I'll be using one that's not nearly as um, pronounced as this one is. It's a 30 foot sanding dish. The kerfing has been glued into place. The, uh, the top and the back has been sanded to the appropriate radius dish. I've also come in here and I've put some rosewood struts, little side struts. You can see those are long grain. And that's really just to help keep it from cracking. You can see how straight the grain is on the sides on that rosewood. Um, you hit it just right and it could cause it to crack. Well, those braces, those struts will help prevent that. And I just took some cut off, some of the scrap from the cut off when I cut the top, sanded them down, cut them into strips and fit them into place. Next step is the end wedge. When I glued the back up, you remember there was a there was a gap there, and I said that I wasn't worried about that because I'm going to put a um, an end wedge in there. And this is it. Um, I just cut this, sanded it square, and I traced it on on the center line. And this will go in here like so. And it's just a decorative piece. But what I'll do is I'll come in here with a Japanese back saw and I'll cut this line. Then I'll take a chisel and I'll remove this and then that will slide down in there. So I've got a block here um, clamped along the line that I drew that matches the, um, the end wedge. And I've got a Japanese back saw here. And I'm just going to start cutting. And I'll cut until I start seeing mahogany sawdust coming up. That means, of course, that I've hit the, the tail block. Then I'll do the same thing on this side. Then I'll take a chisel, chisel it out. Now I just slowly start chipping away using a chisel and making very sure I, I stay within my cut lines there.
You don't try to go all the way down to the tail block in one pass. You just slowly work your way. There's the engraft cut. Nice smooth cut and sanded. Now this will slide right in like such. Oops. I will glue this, nip the ends off, sand it smooth, it'll be beautiful. The sides are completed. The contours have been cut. The kerfing has been glued in. The kerfing has also been radiused to take the arch on the on the back and the end wedge has also been installed so the next step is to start building the back